The Game & Watch series of games were created by Gunpei Yokoi, who is most famous for creating the Game Boy. Yep. Uh, he's not famous for creating the Virtual <laughs> Boy. <laughs> he came up with the idea for the Game & Watch when he was on a Shinkansen, or Japanese bullet train, and he saw a businessman that was just bored playing with their LCD calculator. He decided to come up with a device that would not only tell the time, but allow you to kill time by playing video games at the same time. Time. You have to understand, in the 1980s, digital watches were becoming huge, right? Like everybody was wearing digital watches with the liquid crystal display readouts. So he looked at that and he thought, this, th this exact same technology as it is right now could totally be um, a, a gaming system and we can, we can make little handheld video games out of this. It's very small, very sleek. So it's very lightweight, you can carry it in your pocket. First one was just one screen, a little LCD screen, black and white, that you'd play on. And then they had multiple screens on them, etc. Very simple, your left and right buttons, you select your game A, game B, different modes for your game, and then of course you've got your clock setting. So you can set your alarm, you can set your time. Each one contains one game and a watch with an alarm uh, built into it. So you can technically put this on your bedside table and have it go off in the morning. Not sure if anyone ever did that, by the way. I'm I, not sure anyone did that. I don't know anyone who ever did. Even the design of them, of the games themselves, I mean, they created the D-pad. He's like, okay, well, if we have this thing shaped like a cross, you know, and then you push on it with your thumb, and, and that's going to control the character just like a joystick, but it's going to work, you know, in tandem with this, uh, with this portable gaming device. And that's where we got the D-pad from, you know? So many really, really interesting innovations happening at that time, just out of total necessity. So Nintendo really raised the bar when it came to handhelds. You know, first you had the LEDs, mm -hmm. you know, you had by uh, companies like, uh, you know, Coleco. A blip. Or Mattel. You imagined it. And then all of a sudden, now it's like you can see characters on here. You can see animation, rudimentary, but it's there. We, we used to have like this, the, you know, the Mattel little LED light games. And then someone walks in to the school with one of those. That's like, that's like a kid with a Neo Geo. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's exactly what it was like. The gaming watches were released in series, the first being the Silver Series and the very first game in the Silver Series and the very first Game & Watch ever made was called Ball. It's ingenious in its simplicity. It's just a guy juggling balls. Get your mind out of the gutter. So there's tons of these different games. Some of my favorites would be Octopus and Parachute. Um, I love the dual screen Zelda one. It's legitimately still fun to play. I have it on my bedside table, not as an alarm, but I just pick it up and I play it. Yeah, when you look at the Zelda game and watch, it literally looks like a DS. Mm -hmm. I mean, they brought back the dual screens and it was definitely a throwback to yeah. the early game and watches. Cigarette case? No, game watch, multi screen. Jongye, two screen, de, one game. Game & Watch was very prolific in Japan and there were a lot of different variations. I mean, from the dual screen versions to the single screen versions to even transparent versions that you could see through mm -hmm. and uh, larger uh, tabletop versions as well. And, and before they had their own console in the US, mm -hmm. your exposure to characters like Donkey Kong or the Mario Brothers, if it wasn't an arcade, the only way to see them was on a Game & Watch. So that can't be understated either. These were a huge success for Nintendo. This got them started into really focusing on video games. And what it turned out was it's, it was a great opportunity for them to develop the channel with all the distribution channel with, it, with the cons, uh, consumer marketers in the US so that when the NES came along, the 8-bit system, they already had a relationship that was ready to go. And it led uh, to the development of um, more arcade games. This LCD video game was so successful that, of course, some of these other companies started getting in on the mix. And later on down the line, we started seeing companies like Tiger Electronics follow suit by making these little single game handheld LCD video games. Gunpei Yokoi is the man who really revolutionized the way handheld gaming uh, would be for, for 30 plus years. He's a technical genius. And sadly, Gunpei Yokoi died in a, in a tragic car accident in the late 90s. So uh, though he's gone, his legacy lives on.